If your company has a SharePoint server, meaning that they have a computer that has the software SharePoint on it and it's accessible anywhere there's internet connection, well, then you can go ahead and save your workbook to that SharePoint uh, site, and you can do it one of two ways. The easiest way is just to log into your SharePoint sites. So in other words, when you're at home or on the road, your IT geek dude is going to give you a web link, in which case you can go ahead and click on it, and then it'll prompt you for a username and password. When you log in, I can show you how you can upload the file, this file, from your computer. The other way that seems easy, but it's not, at least you have to set it up, is to come up here and click on the File tab, go down to Save and Send, and there it is, Save to SharePoint. Well, when I click on that, it says, OK, where's the location? When I double click on to Browse, it's going to browse my computer. I don't want it to browse my computer because I want to save this to the SharePoint, and the SharePoint server is not my computer. So I need to do what's called mapping the network drive. I actually need to create a phony network drive that actually links to that SharePoint site. So when I do this file to save and send, and I go save to SharePoint, when I do a save as, it'll go, oh, okay, we want to save it to the uh, SharePoint server, not to this computer. Like I said, the setup's kind of annoying, but once you get it done, you'll be okay. Just be patient with it, because any time that you want to come in here later, and you want to do a save as once you have it mapped, it's going to be a little bit sluggard, and it's going to be slow, but you may have a faster network. In any case, to set this up, let me go ahead and close out. Go ahead and open up your computer either on your desktop or click on the Start button and go to Computer. And then there it is, Map the Network Drive. When you click on it, down here it gives us the link to connect to a website that you can use to store your documents and pictures. Click on that link, and then it's got the Network Wizard. Go ahead and click Next. And then we want to choose a custom network location. It's selected, just make sure it is, and click Next. And then it says go ahead and enter in that uh, website address or the SharePoint server address. You can view some examples here. There we go. It's either going to be an FTP or uh, something HTTP colon slash SharePoint dot Kershaw dot com. In fact, let me go ahead and type it in. Then once I have it typed in, I can go ahead and click Next. It should prompt me for a username and password, so I just need to enter that in here. Then when I'm done, go ahead and click OK. Then it says, OK, what kind of name do you want to give for this location so it's easily recognizable? SharePoint.kkershaw.com. I'm fine with that. Then it says, congratulations, you successfully created this network location. A shortcut will appear in the computer folder. Do you want to go ahead and open this network location when I click Finish? Sure. There we go. There's the network location where I'd go ahead and save this uh, workbook to. When I save it, I would put it in the shared documents unless, of course, when I log in, if I log in directly to the SharePoint site, it has a bunch of tools. You can go ahead and create another folder, or you could create a folder here, add a folder that says uh, My Spiffy Sharing Folder, or just use the default shared documents. Double click on that. I already have a phone list that's uploaded in the shared documents that I could double click and open up and access right now, but I'll go ahead and close out. Now that we're ready to go, I'll click Cancel. There it is. In my computer folder, I've got all my hard drives. I've got my, well, removable storage and then the uh, network location that I double click to go ahead and take a peek what's inside. So now that I have it mapped, pointing to that SharePoint site, I can close out. Because I have Windows 7, I can right-click on the uh, icon on my taskbar, and it gives me a list of my um, five top recent files. I'll go ahead and click SharePoint to open that back up, and then let's go File to Save and Send. Save it to the SharePoint. Let's go ahead and click Save As. And then I just need to go to my computer, and then scroll over. There it is. Double-click to open it up. Ask me for my username and password. This is nice. I have to type it in each time. Then click OK. Like I said, it gets a little bit slow, a little bit sluggish, and then it opens it up. It's starting to look more like the uh, SharePoint site, the SharePoint software. There's the shared documents. Double click on that to open it up. And there's the phone list. I'm going to go ahead and add SharePoint. Maybe I can call it SharePoint 2. Make a copy of it. Click Save. And that will do it. It's uploaded and uh, it opened up the site here, so you can go directly to the site. In other words, here's the link, http sharepoint.kkershaw.com. So this is the way I was talking about. If you just go ahead and directly log into the site, 
and you don't work from the file down to save and send to uh, publish to SharePoint. Let me go ahead and close out. Let me maximize this again. And I want to upload something to the shared documents folder here. There it is, add document. So you can do it from the website here. And then it says, OK, go ahead and browse and find out where it's at. Actually, um, it wants me to install something from the website to help make it run more efficiently. So I'll say run add-on. If you trust it, if you don't trust it, then don't do it. Let me go ahead and click add document. Go ahead and browse for it. Searches my computer. It's on the desktop, it's in the uh, exercises folder, and whatever I want to upload. Conditional formatting, let's double click on that. And then if there's a copy of it with the same name, do I want to overwrite it? There's no copy of it, so I'll just click OK. And it uploads it. So like I said, there's two ways you can do this. You can either log in right into the uh, SharePoint site. Again, get the uh, address name from your IT person. And then, of course, the username and password. Or just go ahead and open up the workbook and do the file to save and send and upload it that way. But to do that, you have to set it up so it's mapped. You can rewatch the training video on how to remap that. Of course, if you want to remove it, you can always minimize that down to the taskbar. Go to the computer here and right click on it and then delete it. I'll go ahead and leave it open for now. Maximize the uh, web page here. And then once you're logged in, if you need to take a peek at somebody else's uh, worksheet that they uploaded, Go ahead and click on it. Do you want to edit or read only? If you do a read only and somebody else wants to take a look at it, they get the option to make changes to it. Only one of you can edit the workbook at the same time. The other person will get a prompt to read only if you're in edit mode. So go ahead and click on that. Opens it up. Be sure to log in. This time I'll remember the credentials and click OK. There you go. When you download it, it disables editing in part to protect you in case if some stinker uploaded this to the company server and they've tied some code to it that when you enable it, it attacks your computer. In any case, I feel comfortable with this. Go ahead and make any changes. Then when I'm done, I can go ahead and click Save and then close out. And then let's leave the shell of the program open and then go ahead. This refreshes. Click on Conditional Formatting. Let's do a Read Only. Click OK. It remembers the username, now I just need the password. And there you go. It remembered my change. There's a lot of things you can do with the uh, SharePoint software here on the server. You can actually hover over any one of these and check the box if you want to send somebody a link and let them know that you want them to log in and work on the uh, this workbook here. So check it. You've got the tabs just like you would see the ribbon in any of your Office applications. Then come up here, click on email a link. Say you want to allow it, it'll open up Outlook. There's the link right to the file. Then go ahead and shoot it off to whoever you want to send it to. So when they get it, they click on it. Unless they have a username and password, they won't be able to uh, access the SharePoint site to open up the document. So only give this to other coworkers who actually have a username and password. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for only $2 a month, you get online access to all my training. Or for downloads and DVDs, please visit me at dreamforce.us.